Okay, for this next video, we're continuing with our fact pattern for John Taxpayer. He's preparing his taxes with the 2022 TurboTax uh, platform. And the previous video we covered, we figured out and entered the information to get John his child tax credit here. It was the $2,000, a portion of which was non-refundable, and then he got the additional child tax credit, which is the refundable portion. So now we're moving on to the earned income credit, whether he qualifies and what are the rules. So um, just a brief recap of, of John here. So again, John is a single parent, has one son under 17 years old, and that's important because you have to be under 17 to qualify for the child tax credit. And so John works full time as a sales agent. He has a side business running an e-commerce store. And so after John claimed the child tax credit for his son, he's now trying to figure out, well, can I get some additional funds through the earned income credit? Now John's tax return, uh, if you've been with us from the beginning, it shows a lot of different types of income, right? So he's got a combination of earned income, which are his W-2 wages and his Schedule C self-employed earnings. That's the e-commerce store. And then he's got some investment income. He's got sales from stocks, cryptocurrency. He's got some dividend and interest income. And the reason why that's important is because in order to qualify for this earned income credit, not only do you have to have some earned income, which he does, but you have to have, if you have investment income, it has to fall below certain thresholds. In other words, if you make too much investment income, regardless of what your earned income is gonna be, uh, you, you're generally ineligible for the credit, the, the EIC. Okay, so what are some of the basics here and, and who can qualify? So uh, the guidance, the best guidance to look for uh, if you need some more information is the IRS publication 596. So this is a very useful tool. A lot of pages in there, a lot of material. We will reference this uh, throughout the video. But it covers all the information about who qualifies, uh, whether you have children or no children, what are the income limitations. And it also contains the table that allows you to figure out exactly what your earned income credit is, uh, amount is depending on your earned income. And so we will look at that as well. Now the credit is available for taxpayers, whether you have children or not. If you don't have any qualifying children, you still qualify, but your income has to be pretty low. Uh, so you have to have a very low income threshold in order to get this EIC amount. Uh, the income amounts jump significantly if you have at least one qualifying ch uh, child. Now the factors in order to qualify, again, your AGI, uh, that's adjusted gross income, has got to be below certain thresholds. You've got to be a U.S. citizen or resident. Uh, can't file the 2555, so that's the earn, uh, foreign earned income exclusion form, right? So you got to be living in the U.S. basically. And your investment income has to be below 10300 okay? Very, very important. Uh, and then again, the dollar amount of your EIC is going it, to, it's a very precise amount, and it's going to depend on where your earned income is per the tables. And when we look at that, what you'll see is the earned income ranges are within $50 increments. So it's very, very particular as to what amount uh, of credit you get. So, okay, so let's go jump to the, the tax return and we'll start having a look at this. So now you remember, we've already entered the child uh, tax credit information. You can see there again, it, it's giving us a $2,000 break. And what TurboTax does very nicely for us is it, it also kind of auto computes some of this stuff. So it's already told us that based on the information we've entered so far, we get an earned income credit of $306. Now, that's very, very nice, obviously, but we want to complete the prompts anyway, just to make sure that if there's any additional information we have to provide, we do so. And just to make sure that the Q&A, the, the question and answers are being done uh, correctly. So if you scroll down, if you're in the deductions under the credit section and you scroll down to the you and your family uh, section of the page, we have the earned income credit and we're gonna revisit this section and just go through these. I wanna talk about some of the questions and just make sure that we actually qualify. So we can see here that it says, from what you've told us already, it looks like you get this EIC. Uh, we just need to check some things to make sure. Okay, that's fine. So I'm gonna continue on through. Did you live in the US for more than six months? Yes, we did. Um, now it says, you know, for purpose of the credit, living in a territory like Guam or Puerto Rico does not count. Okay, that's fine. 
Uh, but again, you know, not an issue for us. We live in Florida full time. So we did live in the US for not just six months, but for, for the full 12 months, right? So we're gonna continue through there. And it asks us to review some uncommon situations. So just read through all these, make sure none of these apply to you. Uh, I was married to a non-resident alien and we lived together for the last six months, no. Uh, I can be claimed as a qualifying child by someone else, no. Uh, John's not gonna be claimed by his parents or another person. Uh, Social Security Guard, um, neither of these for John or his son says not valid for employment. Uh, no 8862 notice. Remember that the 8862 notice can be a uh, form may be required if you try to claim the, the child tax credit or an earned income credit or another credit and it was disallowed and the IRS asked for additional, additional information. We, we haven't gotten anything like that. Uh, and then, you know, worst case scenario, if you actually get a notice saying you can't claim the EIC, then then you can't claim the EIC, right? It's that simple. Th this happens when people uh, f basically fraudulently try to claim the earned income credit. When the IRS catches you, they disallow your ability to claim it for a number of years. And then it expires and you can start doing it again, assuming if you qualify. But you are penalized in the sense that you can't claim it again even if you would otherwise qualify if you have a history of, of claiming it um, in, incorrectly. So in this case, none of these apply. So we're gonna click that box, go ahead and continue. And it tells us uh, very nicely, this is what we want to hear, that we do qualify for the EIC and the return already includes the credit. All right, so I'm gonna click done. And then like we do always, we're gonna look at the tax return itself. So we're gonna go down to tax tools, the print center. Now this time, what I wanna look at is not just the return, but all the worksheets as well. And, and the reason why I wanna do that is because the TurboTax worksheets will show us how we calculate and compute the earned income amount, and then ultimately whatever the EIC uh, is on the return. So for this part, I'm gonna check um, the tax return and include government and TurboTax worksheets. Now these don't get filed with the government. Uh, you know, Generally when the e-file goes through, it's just the forms. Uh, so these additional worksheets are just kind of for your reference. But if I scroll down to the return here, so if we have a look at page two, this is what's the most important part. We can see here that on line 27, there's our EIC for $306. So we are getting a, uh, an earned income credit amount for $306 in addition to our uh, additional child tax credit there. Very nice as well. So the 306, let's examine some of the forms here and schedules and kind of see how we arrived at that number. So. I'm gonna scroll down to the earned income. There's an earned income credit uh, schedule. So schedule EIC, this should be included. None of the computations are on this. It's really just kind of like a validation schedule. So you'll see that it asks us to enter information on our qualifying children. So child's name, social, year of birth. And that's kind of it, right? The relationship is it's our son, 12 months live there. The information on the credit itself is just buried in the worksheets. And so that's why I wanted to print all the worksheets so we can find uh, the kind of all the calculations that are going on in the back and see how we, we figured this out. So let me, bear with me one moment here. I'm gonna quickly kind of scroll through and try to find where this earned income credit worksheet is. Uh, qualified business income. 1099s, yep, this is all great stuff, but not relevant right now. Traditional IRA contributions. Ah, here we go. Earned income worksheets, right? Notice how it says keep for your records, right? So do just that. Don't send this to the IRS, they don't care. Uh, so, okay, so <laughs> this is where you calculate what your earned income is because you need to know your earned income to figure out what amount of credit you're gonna get. So the earned income credit worksheet here, you notice that they're pulling information from Schedule SE, that's our self-employment income schedule. Uh, on here, they've also listed our wages, right? That's John's W-2 wages. Uh, they have some uh, deductions for uh, uh, 
uh, th they're taking out the self-employment taxes there to try to get some net numbers. And then we move on to page two of the EIC. We've got the wages there again, the net self-employment income after calculating for the, the, the self-employment tax. And we can see here on line six is our earned income amount. All right, that's, that's the important number. So our earned income per this worksheet is 41,557. And then it tells us that our earned income credit is $306. Now you notice here, there's no table, there's no additional information because obviously TurboTax is just pulling this information from behind the scenes. But if we try to find where we get that 306 number, we can look at the EIC tables in publication 596. So if I go, so if I, if I minimize this and I go to, um, so this is publication 596. I've got this um, open up in a browser here. You can find this on their IRS website. The publication 596 is 38 pages, so there's a lot of material in here, but they have uh, an EIC eligibility checklist, right? So depending on how many kids you have, uh, what your income is, it kind of walks you through whether or not you're going to be able to get anything. Um, question five, right? They're asking us, is our investment income 10, 3 or less? And so on and so forth. So the table is what we're really after. So this is the 2022 EIC table. And let me explain kind of how this works. On the left hand side here, so this column here, and then you know it's separated in two columns. So this column and then and then these columns here, these ranges are the income ranges. So if I look at like page two, for example, they're asking us if the amount of our earned income is between forty-eight hundred dollars and forty-eight fifty. Then I use this line item here to figure out what my earned income credit is, and then it depends on your filing status and then the number of children. So in John's case, for example, if this was his earned income range, zero kids, your credit would be three sixty-nine. If you have one child and you're head of household, your credit is 1641 and so on. So that's how the table works. So if we look at, remember John's earned income was in the 41,000 range. Let's go back to uh, the table there. I wanna make sure we get this number right. So his earned income was 41,557, okay? 41,557. So if I go to the EIC tables here and I try to find where does 41,557 fall? Okay, it's right here. See 41,550 to 41,600. 41,557 falls within that range. Now, based on that income range, remember he's head of household, so head of household up here, and he has one child. So if we look at this line item, move across from left to right, this column is one child, and we can see here $306 is his earned income credit, right? That's the number that TurboTax is giving us, is the 306 amount. Uh, so that's long and the short of how they got there, right? After you compute your earned income per the tables, 306 is the EIC, and then that number is ultimately reported up above on page two as the earned income credit. All right, so uh, that covers it for this tutorial. I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, obviously feel free to leave me a comment below. Happy to answer any questions I can. And I look forward to seeing you again on the next video. Thanks so much.